Hello, everyone. So let me first talk about my research. Uh, can deep learning restore the fast particle dynamics from noisy fluorescent images? Since this is a multidisciplinary conference, I am going to talk about the cross sections of physics, computer science, as well as biology, how all of, three, all of these three combine together and play a big role. So let me first talk about the outline of what I had in mind. First up, uh, I'm going to go through the, uh, the problem we have and how deep learning can be used to fix this. Uh, and also talk about some strong evaluation criteria that we will use. Then the types of data that we handled, and finally the results, discussions, and the conclusions. So this is what we call as single particle tracking. It's a famous biophysical uh, sort of uh, technique people use to track particles using a camera. And uh, we actually observe their motion. And from observing this, we are able to construct a trajectory, what you see here in color. And uh, after, once we get this trajectory, we can extract information out of these particles. Uh, but a common problem that we have is that uh, when we want to observe very fast moving particles, we want to go for higher frame rates, which means the camera speed is going to increase. And as you go for higher frame rates, this is a flaw in every camera, uh, you lose on exposure time. And when you lose on exposure time, what happens is that the noise of the images increases. And when you have high noise, it is impossible to do any tracking. As you see here in this five millisecond photograph, there's nothing much you can track out of it compared to its uh, thousand millisecond uh, photo. So what we thought was, what if you have these noisy images taken at very low exposure times? What if you can apply some deep learning techniques on it and restore them? Now, deep learning is a branch of artificial intelligence. It's like the newest member of machine learning, which, uh, which has enabled computers to recognize patterns. And uh, this is something remarkable and sort of revolutionizing this area very rapidly. And so it was shown that it has the ability to restore very noisy images. So we thought, can we use it on this? Now, there are some questions uh, that come because once you sort of connect these trajectories, can we actually trust them? Because it looks pretty, but uh, is it actually accurate? Those are the questions that we have. And we are using two deep learning methods. Uh, one which uses a supervised approach and the other one an unsupervised approach. So it's called CARE and this one is called N2V. So to understand CARE, basically it's uh, where you feed uh, two, um, where, you, uh, where you feed pairs of images taken at different exposure times. And you're basically uh, telling the computer to learn from, the, uh, from these two images. This is what it's supposed to look like because it already has prior information. And if you look at the unsupervised method, basically that is something where you're feeding the computer with only noisy images and you're asking the computer to figure out on its own what the noise pattern is supposed to be. So this is a, just a brief understanding of how these two methods are. Now we need to have a very strong evaluation criteria. Uh, so, that's why I separate it as dynamics and statics. When we talk about the dynamics of this, we have to make sure that whatever that was restored, those trajectories sort of have the same or similar diffusion and anomalous coefficients. And diffusion and anomalous coefficients are extracted from the mean square displacement. Mean square displacement, uh, what it basically means is uh, how far the particle has traveled from its previous position. So you can kind of call diffusion as speed, but it's a similar meaning. And the statics of uh, these images is that uh, once you have identified certain uh, uh, blobs or foci, you have to make sure that they're actually uh, located at the same, uh, maybe close enough, you know, at least one pixel apart. So we had to may have a very strong uh, evaluation criteria just to make sure that these restored pixels didn't have any difference that much. And now the methods or the types of data we used are, one is a synthetic bead model. So this is something where you can artificially add noise onto it. 
and uh, track them. And then the other one is real experimental data, which involves nucleosomes taken at different exposure times. And the third one is uh, chromatin microdomains. Basically, you have this seven by seven grid and, uh, and we made sure that these cells are fixed so they don't move. And what we wanted to make sure is that the restoration also showed that it was fixed. So it's a very different uh, sets of tests. And uh, if you look at the synthetic beads, uh, the type of results that we got was that uh, both CARE and N2E did a remarkable job in terms of restoration. And when you look at the dynamics of it, uh, these both of these methods, supervised and supervised, showed some promise. Now, if you look at the nucleosomes, now this is tricky because it's you're dealing with real data. When you compare the statics of it, same images without any movement, CARE had done better. Therefore, we had to disregard N2V in our analysis. And when you compare the dynamics of it, we wanted to compare it between the 50 millisecond as well as the 10 milliseconds. So this 10 millisecond was actually restored up to this level. But there are some questions that came is that it's not a complete match. So we were wondering whether there are other factors that contribute. And uh, so this is where we uh, had some confusions. Then when you look at the micro domain data, uh, supervised and unsupervised did a good job. And when you look at uh, how the recovery of it, uh, we can see here is that care has done much better compared to that of N2V. And in, even in this care has outperformed it. So overall, what we see is that for synthetic model, both of these techniques are wonderful, but for the real data, there are some concerns that we need to answer because uh, we are wondering if there's an effect of motion blur or if actually what we see or what we observe from this restoration is actually the truth. Those are some questions we have. And also this uh, in the chromatin microdomain example, both have done well, but care sort of outperformed the other. And also one thing that we notice is that care can introduce misleading artifacts, which is very careful. Or oh, you can see here from this white arrow that it was not supposed to be there and it was introduced. So in conclusion, you know, whenever possible, try to use the supervised approach and whatever that looks pretty isn't always accurate. And we are quite sure that these techniques will improve in future. We'd like to thank our supporters and these are the references. So if there are any questions, I'd be happy to take them.